It was Einstein who first proposed the idea of time travel via wormholes, but now I, Lisa Loud, have come very close to actually creating one. All I need to figure out is how to harness the necessary energy to- I need you to take my pulse. I'm working on a breathing technique that lowers my heart rate to the point of barely being alive. Nope, still quite robust. Dang it, I hate robust. Pardon the interruption. As I was saying- Elise, we need your help. We found this cupcake behind the radiator. It's got a little mold on it, but can we still eat it? Uh, only if you want to ingest gangrenous ergotism, alimentary toxic alukia, or stachybotrys sartarum. Ugh, no thanks. You had me at gangrenous. Apologies once again. Now, to conduct- Yo, Brain Box, I'm playing a gig at Sunset Canyon tonight. And I need to make sure the oldies can hear me. Can you measure my decibel level? Not right now. I think you should be fine, which is more than I can say for my beaker collection. I'm so sorry. It's not easy being a research scientist in a household populated by uncouth, disorderly siblings. I look forward to the day when I'll have somewhere quiet to work. Well, why not today? You're welcome to come spend this afternoon here at the Institute. We have top-notch facilities where you could continue your research free of distractions. Really? That sounds phenomenal. I'd say I have butterflies, but we both know that it's just the reduction of blood flow to my stomach. <laughs> Boom! How soon can I come? Lisa, so glad you could join us for the day. Let me give you the tour. Over there is our biosphere. Through that door is our nuclear fission facility. And those are the restrooms. So when does the bathroom line typically form? I'd like to arrive early so I don't waste valuable research time. There's never a line. Shut the anterior entryway! In here is the crown jewel of the Institute. Our research laboratory. It's at your disposal. Enjoy the quiet afternoon. Erlenmeyer flasks? 2,000 milliliter beakers? This place is every four-year-old's dream! <sighs> the only gases I smell are the noble kind. There's no better place for my scientific mind. Look, it's a chimp! I can observe how it swings. This lab is so amazing, it's making me sing. With so many test tubes, my tests won't go wrong. This lab is where I belong. No wailing guitars and no spooky sis. No cupcake dilemmas. You can even hear this. <sighs> it's quantum equations, it's Saturn's bright rings. When you're working with colleagues and not with your siblings. With such fine equipment, my work can't go wrong. All my neurons are firing. This is where I... Esteemed colleagues, I believe I have cracked it. By combining super magnets, nuclear fission, and banana peels, one can produce the necessary energy to open a wormhole large enough for a human being to pass through. Boom. Time travel. Brilliant. An epic achievement. Thank you, Dr. Jelson. I couldn't have done it without the opportunity to work in such an optimal environment. I also had a marvelous time in the bathroom. In fact, I think I'll visit it on the way out. Wait, you don't have to go. Look at all you've accomplished in half a day. Imagine if you were here full time. I'm honored. I'd say I have a lump in my throat, but we both know it's merely the tightening of my esophageal sphincter. You want to stay there? What? I, I don't understand, honey. What, what's wrong with working from home? <laughs> It has its distractions. Okay, true, but that doesn't mean you have to leave your family and move to some institute. What? Wait, Lisa's leaving us? What's an institute? Honey, you've never been away from home. Plus, you're four. I anticipated this reaction, and so I constructed this pie chart detailing my psychological makeup. The green area represents scientific pursuit, which, as you can see, makes up 97%. The orange slice at 2% represents my affinity for West Coast rap. And finally, the blue sliver at 1% represents my emotional attachments. Dang, you're as cold as ice, brah. 
All I'm saying is that research is my life, and this is a huge opportunity. Huh. Well, what do you think, honey? Well, sweetie, you've always been independent. I guess we can give it a try. Yes! Oh, Miss oh, Lee! Oh, oh, I, I called dibs on her room! Oh, wait, Lily's in that room. Never mind. <laughs> Lisa, what's going on? Meh, just getting rid of all this stupid old science stuff. You don't have to go that far. Oh, I do. Lincoln, you have opened my surgically corrected eyes. Being part of the gang is way more fun than being smart. Say hello to the new Lisa Loud. Street name, L-Dog. Have you heard of Boys Will Be Boys? They're not quite Stravinsky, but... I mean, they're so cute. Dude, you gotta help me cram for my test tomorrow. Sorry, I'm out of the tutoring game. Pogus, since when? Since Lincoln showed me the joys of being average. <laughs> it's not my fault. The recipe is in metric, and Lisa usually helps me with the conversions. Thanks to Lincoln, I'm out of the conversion game. Except for converting beans to methane. <laughs> Three passes to the Royal Woods Day Spa for the first caller who can name all three classifications of rocks. <laughs> Lisa, tell him the answer! Hard rock, soft rock, and indie. Uh, no. You lose, baby. What? Thanks to Lincoln, I'm out of the geology game. Oh, hi, Dad. You've been waiting at the train station for an hour? Oh, my gosh. I am so sorry. Just stay put. I'll be right there. Oh, poor Pop-Pop. What happened? Well, usually when Pop-Pop's on a train headed east going 80 miles an hour and he has 230 miles to his destination, Lisa can tell me exactly when he'll arrive. What can I say? I'm out of the algebra game. Right, Lincoln? Ooh. Oh, Lisa. Thank goodness you're here. We need the antidote you are working on. Sorry, Miss S. I'm out of the disease control game. My big brother here showed me how lame and annoying it is to be an egghead. And I am out of here. Way to go, Buster. Now all my kids have strep throat. I'm sorry, but I didn't have a choice. If she kept acting like a brain, I was going to be out of the gang. Well, as long as it's for a good reason. I was going to have to sit at the sticky table. Yeah! <laughs> Lisa, you have to go back to being smart. What? And give up all this? Lisa! 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 Not likely. Thanks, L-Dog. Hey. Lisa, listen to me. Any halfwit can be part of the gang. No offense, Zach. But no one else I know can heal sick people and save Dad's cooking and figure out what time Pop-Pop's train is arriving. What I'm trying to say is, the world needs smart Lisa. Flattering words, big brother, but I already bought this leather jacket. I'll pay you back for it. Just go finish the antidote, please. What about the gang and being part of it? I'd rather be the one to suffer than a classroom full of kids with strep throat. Man, I can't have that on my conscience. Okay, but if I go back to being smart, Lisa, you're getting the whole package, i.e. unabashed superiority and zero tolerance for ignorances. It'll probably be back to the sticky table for you. That's a chance I'm willing to take. You're a good man, Lincoln Loud. As Socrates once quipped, the jack oh, to heck with this thing. Line up, no pushing, there's plenty for everyone. So, how'd it go this morning? We lost one. I'm kidding, it went fine, all cured. Good job. Lunch for two at the sticky table? Don't train an L-Dog, bark it! Really? I must give you fair warning, I have reverted to my previous incarnation. Smart Lisa's back. Smart Lisa's fine by me. My little sissy's in that there kindergarten class. Yeah, and that virus could have spread to all of us. I can't get strep. I've got a date on Friday. We're sorry we treated you badly before. Our class sure is lucky to have someone with smarts like yours. Thanks for your support, guys. But you don't have to worry. I'm going back to kindergarten. So I can have my seat back? Hello, Dr. Lopez? I don't need that appointment after all. 
what about wanting a challenge? Meh, kindergarten, fifth grade. It's all a snooze fest to me. I'm gonna pursue my own studies either way. And kindergarten does have one major advantage. Okay, boys and girls, nap time. Now, Lisa, I know you're not gonna want a nap, but... Are you kidding? After the day I've had, I am bushed. Oh, and by the way, Miss S, if you attempt to wake me up before my required 45 minutes of REM sleep, you'll have to answer to Todd. Namaste, Miss Trinit Boss. Now that my academic record is secure and my seat on the Interplanetary Council is solidified, I can return to my beloved research. Have you missed me, Electron Microscope? Hi, new friend. Oh, uh, right. Greetings, Darcy. Are we playing scientist today? You always make it look so fun. <laughs> this isn't really playing. It's complex and potentially dangerous research. Maybe we can engage in play and or sport later. Oh, okay. I'll save you a spot on the seesaw at recess. Slight complication. I failed to consider that the subject might wish to remain friends after I achieved my objective. Lisa! Lisa! <sighs> Although she did help me secure that A. Hi, Draft Twin. <gasps> Rafa wants to play. Did you bring your giraffe? Yeah, a mine does not travel well. Now, if you don't mind, I do need my REM sleep. I have a lot of short-term memories I need to convert to long-term. Oh, I tell you what. You, Rafa, and I can circle back to that play date post-slumber. Sound like a plan? Naps are boring. Let's play now. Maybe we can wake her up with a... Take a bite! My dad packed two cookies today. One for me and one for my new friend. Oh, that is very generous, but I must decline. Spikes in blood sugar affect my mental acuity. So just kelp leather for me today. That's okay. We can still sit together. I, actually, if you don't mind, I was hoping to use snack time to brush up on my Mandarin. I have a video conference coming up with some colleagues in Singapore. Ooh, I have a book too. Reading Twins. The cat s -s 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 sat. And now to add a single drop of the concentrated acid. Hi, friends! I made you something in craft time. What is this bizarre shackle? A friendship bracelet. I can show you how to make one for me, too. And then we can be bracelet twins. <sighs> Darcy. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to make one of these. I know it looks hard, but I can help you. No, 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 no. See, you're a great kid, but my lifestyle isn't really conducive to having friends. To be perfectly frank, I sought you out to improve my grade and social skills. Now that that objective has been achieved, I feel it would be best for both of us if we went our separate ways. I do appreciate your assistance, though, and if you ever need a reference for another friend, I would be glad to give you a glowing recommendation. What's wrong? Did some of the concentrated acid get in your eye? No! You hurt my feelings! <laughs> oh, dear. Darcy, please don't be despondent. Girls, what's going on here? I, uh, nothing to worry about, Miss Renovas. Darcy, why are you crying? Lisa said she didn't want to be my friend anymore. <laughs> Darcy, why don't you go get Rafo and meet me in my reading chair? Lisa, why did you say that to Darcy? Look, Miss S, I understand that friendship is an academic requirement, but to be honest, I just don't see the point of it. I'm afraid until you do, I can't give you that A in social skills. Now I'd like you to go sit in time out and think about how you treated Darcy. <sighs> well, there goes my perfect academic record. What am I gonna tell the other beings on the Interplanetary Council? <gasps> now I might not even make the council. I might have to be an alternate. Lisa, I thought you might like this. Why are you giving this to me? You looked sad. I wanted to make you feel better. But why would you want to make me feel better? Because that's what friends do for each other. 
because that's what friends do for each other. Would you excuse me just for one moment? Research epiphany. I have discovered the point of having friends, not to check off an academic requirement or to impress a bunch of aliens, but because friends make your life better. Thank you, Darcy. Care to join me? Hey, you want to come over after school and play with my cat scan machine? We have a kitty too! Cat twins! I fear for my family's well-being. Truth is the foundation of any functioning society. Whereas lying can only lead to chaos and ruin, I must rectify this problem. you're talking about. Hmm, what seems to be the problem here? Oh, it's always borrowing my gong to punctuate comedic moments, and now it's missing! I know she took it! No, I didn't! Luna, you're right. Luann is lying. No, I'm not! Oh, yes, you are! Behold, my latest invention, lie-detecting glasses. They allow me to track micro-expressions, pulse, pupil dilation, and perspiration to determine untruths. This family is guilty of excessive lying, and I must correct the problem before it's too late. All right, which one of you water buffaloes destroyed the bathroom? Wasn't me, Dad. That's a lie. So, what'd you think of the new chapter? Um, I really liked it. Bib. Oh, it's beautiful, Lily. I love it. Untruth. <laughs> Lenny, there's no hot water left. Could you take another 40-minute shower? <laughs> no, I was in there like five minutes. Raisin falsehood. Uh, greetings, family. Can I help you? You sure can. You can stop using your terrible glasses! They're literally driving us crazy. Look, I'm simply doing what's best for this family. Every lie drags us closer to chaos and ruin. Sweetie, I agree, but sometimes a little white lie helps smooth things over. I firmly disagree. There's no such thing as a good lie. <sighs> okay, it's clear what we have to do. Tell the truth? No! Destroy those ding-dang glasses! care to explain this? <gasps> Are those your special glasses? Oh, oh I feel lie. so bad. Lie, lie, lie. What is that? I anticipated pushback to my effort to stamp out lying, so I created a backup system of lie-detecting cameras. You'll find them conveniently located in every room of the house. Not for long. <laughs> I anticipated this as well. Protective shields. This isn't right, dude. You can't just force this on us. It may sting at first, but eventually you'll see I'm doing this for your own good. A new day, a new chance to restore truth to the Loud House. Hey, Lincoln. What do you think of my new haircut? I went to this new place where they cut your hair in under three minutes or it's free. Um, it's great. You look amazing. That's a lot. You don't like it? Uh, I mean, it's not terrible. He is still lying through his chipped teeth. Just tell me the truth, Lincoln. Okay, okay. It's the worst haircut I've ever seen. There's bald patches everywhere, and then just this random rat tail in the back. Ugh. Excellent. This is why the truth is important. Now that Lenny knows her hair looks awful, she can remedy the situation. So, don't keep me in suspense. What do you think? 
Maybe we should talk in the car. I also installed cameras in Vanzilla. Fine. It's boring, Mom. You spent ten pages describing a garden. That was supposed to be a metaphor, but fine. Harsh. But every writer does need truthful feedback. Hey, Lori, are you free? I need a ride to the dump. On Thursdays, the hair salon throws out the extra hair, and it makes the perfect stuffing for a beanbag chair, if you can tolerate the smell. A ride? Uh, well, uh, technically, yes. I am free to give you a ride. Woohoo! Yeah! Come on. Mm-hmm. Oh, it seems as though everything is on track. And now, as everyone continues to tell the truth, it's time for my midday cellular rejuvenation. Street name, Nap. Behold, youngest sibling, my new improved method to elongate Pop-Pop's life. Well, it's quite simple, really. These sensors will regulate his temperature, improve his muscle tone, and much more. As long as he wears them, he's guaranteed to live a long life. Hmm. Hmm. But I suppose the whole thing is a bit of an eyesore. Good thing I have Lenny to turn to for fashion help. No need to hide the evidence of your frozen delicacy, Pop-Up. I've made some adjustments to my plan, and you'll no longer be restricted to the raw fish diet. Oh, glad to hear it. What's with the change of heart, kiddo? Oh, I realized that the regimen was too taxing, so I came up with an alternative. Ooh! Inside are sensors that will extend your lifespan without requiring any changes to your daily behavior. So I can go back to living my life the way it was before? As long as you're wearing the suit. You got a deal. Target on the left, pop up. I see him. Boom. <laughs> Dang, Al, great suit. You're sure looking fly. <laughs> Thanks. My granddaughter's made it for me. We're just on the way to the pharmacy for some gossip and lotto tickets. Want to join? Sure. That sounds... <laughs> ah, not so fast. Your suit's battery power is low. Uh, come on, I set up a charging station in your room. Excuse us, gentlemen. Oh! So, how long do I have to sit in this thing? The suit needs to charge for three hours. Hmm, guess I better wet my whistle first. Nah, you must remain perfectly still. The sensors cannot disengage from the charger. Got it. <laughs> sure hope this thing doesn't need to be charged often. Just five times a day. Fantastic! The suit is all charged up! What shall we do now, Papa? Uh, uh, ooh, how about we play some shuffleboard with my buds? Oh, sorry, Papa. We can't go outside. The rays from the sun could damage the sensors in the suit. Oh, guess I'll just play shuffleboard at night from now on. Well, as long as there's no moon out. Obviously, moonlight is just sunlight reflected off the moon. <laughs> Oh, actually, I should probably head home for dinner. Wait, where's my big Lisa hug? <laughs> no, no, you can't touch anyone. What? The oils from human skin could damage the sensors. From now on, you'll need to refrain from all physical contact. Oh, so no more Lisa hugs? No more high fives with Seymour? No more dancing with Myrtle? At least we need to have a talk. Thank you for making this suit. It's a super swell idea, but I don't think I can wear it anymore. What? Why? Well, it's sweet you want me to live a long life, but I want to be able to play shuffleboard in the sun and eat crispy potatoes every day. And a life without Lisa Hugs? Well, that's no life at all. Hmm, I see. So you're saying what's the extra time good for if you won't get to enjoy it? Exactly. Besides, I've still got lots of great years ahead of me, and spending time with my grandkids is the part I look forward to the most. Oh, I'm looking forward to that, too. Lisa hug? Mm -hmm. Physical contact detected. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still have a little time before dinner. What say we ditch the suit and hit the shuffleboard court? I'd love that. 
Hey, Al, want to take a shot? Yes, I do. Uh, yeah. No! Ha-ha, <laughs> yeah! Oh. <laughs> Glad I can still cut a rug with my sweetheart. <laughs> hey, Pop-Pop, can I ask you to do one thing? Sure. Just keep being you. Don't have to ask me twice. Now, who wants to play another round? <laughs> Scooch is gonna live forever! <laughs> take your places, please. Contestants, take your places. Oh, thank goodness for step ladders. Well, this is a surprise. I didn't expect you'd still want to cheer me on under the circumstances. Cheer you on? Ha! We're here to beat you, and they are here to cheer us on. Yeah! <laughs> you both perform passably in tryouts, but quite frankly, you don't stand a chance against myself and Airbot. Agreed. Your human brains are a joke. Oh, yeah? Well, you would look terrible in a crop top. Yes, that stings. On your mark, get set, go! Today on Double Dare, it's Louds versus Louds. Now remember, teams, whoever hooks more antlers wins control of the round. Blue team's not looking too good. It's not that easy. Red team's playing it real cool and, oh, ring-a-ding-ding! -ding! Red team wins control of round one. Go, Fish! Go, Dare Bosh! Go, Dare Bosh! Oh, yeah, get used to seeing this. Okay, we're back. Antlers are off and thinking caps on, red team. Here we go. Which of these is not part of an atom? Protons, neutrons, or jumbotrons? Jumbotrons, obviously. And may I say your attempts at humor are quite juvenile. Hey, I only ask the questions, man. I don't write them. Okay, next question. Which of these sports is not played with cleats? Baseball, soccer, or croquet? Ah, sports, my Achilles heel. Good thing I have you, Darebot. You neglected to program me with sports trivia in favor of sarcasm and sauciness. I suggest we dare. Uh, dare. Oh, dare it is, blue team. A shoe question? I know the answer, I know the answer! Wait, they don't know the answer. Let's double dare them and put them on the spot. Double, double dare! Ooh, the suspense. Red team, will you take the question or the physical challenge? It appears my hand's been forced. We'll take the physical challenge. Okay, it's a physical challenge for Red Team. In the Hammerheads Challenge, contestants must use their noggins to break a dozen eggs. Sound simple? Well, not with a vibrating table. <laughs> Disposing of a few eggs should be no problem for Darebot. On your mark, get set, go! No egg is safe from Darebot. Darebot smash! Yeah, we got this. What's happening? I programmed you better than this. You opted for wit over waterproofing, and that's no yoke. Well, I better rewire your chest. Aw, oh, looks like you're a few eggs short of an omelet, which means the points go to the blue team. <sighs> After one heck of a round, blue team's behind by 200 points, but they do have control of the game. Let's see if they can catch up. Blue team, what famous export originated from the town of Nîmes, France? Oh, that's easy. It's denim, which derives from the French Serge de Nîmes. Whoa, you got it! Blue <gasps> team gets the points! A geographical question with an international economic twist. I didn't know she had it in her. And the game is tied! And you know what that means? It all comes down to the obstacle course! And we're back. The first team to complete the obstacle course with the most flags is our winner and gets to pick from our incredible grand prizes! Teams, on your mark, get set, go! <laughs> Based on statistical probability of past episodes, the flag is most likely under the... Under the... Under the Come on! Under the what? The second pancake. Ah, it's not here, Darebot. Does not compute pancakes. Marie Curie, Poland, Poland, Poland. Got it! Blue team is on the move. Look alive, Darebot. I can't Get find it. the flag. Darebot, come on, this away. Come on, guys, get the flag! Get that flag! 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 That boy, Darebot. Victory is still within our grasp. Go, 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 go! Red team is in the lead, and they lost it. Next up is a scenic ride through Lake Gelatin. Oh, you missed it by that much, Red team. Well, there's more than one way to cross a lake of gelatin. Come on, baby. That is some inventive thinking. 
I was not built for this. Red team is catching up. Where's the flag? I got it. I got it. The teams are still tied. Whoever reaches the flag on top of Mount St. Double Dare first wins. Be careful. Watch your step. I love this game. Siblings, congrats on your win. I realize now that I underestimated your abilities. I'm sorry. No worries. We know you really wanted that space capsule. Yeah, but I should have stuck by my family. So, hmm. Brain broccoli, nope. Family fecal and hair samples, nope. Sorry, Snakebird. Genetic engineering is too pedestrian for a day this big. Combustible ketchup? No. Please. Ah! What's going on in here? We heard the snake bird and Mom sent me to check on Lily. Nah, she's fine. <laughs> ah! As you can see, I'm in the midst of a crisis of epic proportions. I'm slated to give the keynote research presentation at this year's Genius Con, and I have no new research to present. Hmm. You know what always helps me think? A Flippy. I'm in extreme pain, but I have no additional neurological activity to report. Hey, what's with the sour face? Your goldfish die or something? Uh, there's a 500-pound steel drum on your foot. Dang it, that's twice today! <gasps> ah. <gasps> Hard work really gets my stomach grumbling. Is that the same cheese we put on our nachos? Yeah, cheese is cheese, chief. My heart! Far be it for me to question your ailment, but the heart is located in the thoracic cavity in a space known as the mediastinum. And yeah, not flips! Mine's in my belly! Extraordinary pain tolerance, misplaced organs, a diet consisting of mostly gas station cheese. <gasps> Flip, how would you like to be the subject of my new research project? Ah, Flip ain't no science, man. My research will be presented at one of the largest scientific conferences in the world. It would be great publicity for the food and fuel. Ah. Ah, and you got yourself a deal. <laughs> Wow, first I'll need to run some routine deaths. Five minutes, that's amazing, Flip. <laughs> now we're going to see how you hold up in sub-zero temperatures. <laughs> amazing. The experts in every scientific field are at this conference. Hey, sorry we're late. We had a lengthy discussion about what smart casual means. What are you two subcranials doing here? Uh, they're here to do promotion. You got the samples? Yep, and the brand new Flips Food and Fuel Pneumatic Flippy Cannon. Ugh, just don't embarrass me. This is a big night for me. Psst, come on, Lise. We're pros. Ah! Sorry, Dr. McClough. Please welcome Lisa Loud. Greetings, colleagues. I, Lisa Loud, PhD, JD, MD, and occasional DDS, present to you an epic discovery. I give you Animalia Cordata Mammalia Flippia. <laughs> Now, to the naked eye, an ordinary human male, but a closer look reveals something far different. His liver is in his neck. His skin is one big callus. He has gills. His heart beats like no other. And last but certainly not least, my greatest discovery of all, the specimen has two posterior crevices. Street name, butt cracks. So head on down to Flip's Food and Fuel after the show. Come for the snacks, stay for the cracks. Ooh, yeah. Come on there, baby. There. Oh, yeah. Flip's Food and Fuel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great job, Lise. Hmm. 
Bravo, Miss Loud. Absolutely brilliant presentation. Dr. Carol Linnaeus, pleasure to meet you. Hmm, incognito laboratories. Never heard of it. Lisa, I'll be frank. Your discovery may be the basis of a new field of science. We would love to do further research on your test subject at our facility, just for a day or so. Oh, I'm honored. What do you say, Flip? Eh, I'm not interested. <laughs> Flip, I beg of you. I could be Lisa Loud, the mother of modern biology. That's all fine and dandy for you, Chief, but uh, what's in it for old Flip here? Did I mention we pay handsomely? Hi, man. Hey, thanks for calling me handsome. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, okay. Uh, if I could just have you initial here, we will be on our way. Thanks, short stack. Between the cash and free publicity, ooh, I owe you big time. Now you boys watch the food and fuel till I get back. Aye, aye, Flip. Tyrannosaurus rex is a genus of Soalorosaurian theropod dinosaur. It lived 83.6 million years ago in the Cretaceous period. Lisa. What is it, David? Did its roar sound like this? <laughs> There's nothing funny about flatulence. Your colon is simply reacting to the protein nuggets. Children, settle! Settle, I say! <laughs> I shall tolerate no further malfeasance! Carebot 2.0. Carebot 2.0, ready to adjust attitudes. My associate Darebot here has been programmed with special disciplinary functions. Cool robot! Silence, child! <laughs> Switch from obliterate to gentle chiding. Should be okay now. Darcy, sweetie, please raise your hand before you speak. Much better. Now, let's load those brains up with knowledge. And that is how verbs interact with adjectives in Mandarin. Up next, Cantonese. <laughs> When he bestrides the lazy pacing clouds and sails upon the bosom of the air. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Clap or be destroyed, children. Thank you, thank you. How unexpected. And that is why fecal parasites should not be kept as pets. Learned that one the hard way. Is this a leg? <laughs> Yes, Darcy? Is Miss Allegra ever coming back? Miss Allegra? Don't you see how much more I've taught you in her absence? Hey, we should prove it with a pop quiz before lunch. <laughs> <laughs> fail, 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 fail. Ugh, they've learned absolutely nothing. Here I am, a fountain of knowledge, yet no one is drinking from me. <sighs> Dads, how do I get through to these booger eaters? Teachers bring learning to life. Oh, Miss Allegra, even your mug is predictable. Wait a minute. Bringing learning to life? That's it! Let's go, Darebot. Darebot 2.0, top me off, Agnes. If this is decaf, I will destroy you. Welcome back, students. Please take your seats. I forgive you for your, um, shall we say, less than stellar test scores, but, um, all of that is about to change. I know how much you love Run, Dino Run, but instead of just telling you about Dolly the Dinosaur, I am going to show you! Darebot, dinosaur DNA Wi-Fi particle transfer, if you please. Darebot 2.0, activated. <laughs> It's working! It's working! <laughs> Students, say hello to the real Dolly the... a teachable moment about apex theropods. <laughs> Darebot, I need your assistance. Post taste. Darebot, 2.0. Stop the dinosaur! 
Hulk creature. Oh, for God's sake, mind the craft fair. Dare bot will terminate you. Dare bot, I coded you to be tougher than this. Dare bot, two point. Right, that's gonna take me hours to fix. I taste like protein nugget and fear. Back from the hill. Ah! Oh, trapped like a lab rat. No, 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 no! You can't end like this. Hey! Get away from her, you beast! Miss Allegra! Who's a cranky Saurus? Have a juice box. <laughs> My gut says we run a slant route to Margo. Try a hook and ladder instead. There's a 91% chance it'll end in you shaking your posteriors in victory. Trust the numbers. Hut, hut. Keep it moving, people! According to mathematical models, the optimal amount of cardio needed to enhance gameplay is 4.2 hours. We need a water break, Coach. Oh. <laughs> so, what's the post-practice grub sitch, Coach? Wings, nachos, pasta? Even better. Uh, chalk? Nutritional powder. There are 16.3 milligrams of iron in this, the optimal amount of nutrients needed to maximize performance. It's a little dry. <laughs> now dry off. We have an athletic competition in which to partake. This is the best Royal Woods has looked all season. New analytics coach Lisa Loud has them in a tight game, but still trailing. 22X, Dreamboat, Archimedes, 91 Wag. Blue 22, Blue 22, hut, hut. Oh, and she makes the throw and runs up the middle. The 30, the 20, the 10, touchdown! Woo! Wow, Royal Wood scores in the final seconds, but it's not enough. They lose a nail biter, 24 to 20. Game pounds are for winners only. I thought this map card was supposed to work, Lise. It is working. We may not have won, but we lost by a lot less than in previous games. You can see how my mathematics approach is paying off. At first, you were here, losing by 50 points. Now, we're here, losing by only four points. We have vastly improved. Okay, so what's next? We double our efforts. I promise to wins. I intend to deliver. We're going to follow the math to victory! Yeah! 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 Whoa, 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 P. Let me help you with that. Hat sweat. Helmet sweat. Cleat sweat. Why is all your gear in this bag? Because Lisa traded me. Uh, hold this. <laughs> You traded Paula? She's the only punter we have. Oh, we can't be punting anymore. Statistically speaking, we're 79.68% better off going for it on fourth down. Trust the numbers. Oh, BT Dubs, Margot's been traded too. What? Meh, Margot's a fine receiver, but she's only four foot 11. My calculations show that we could increase passing output with someone taller. Meet wide receiver one. At six foot four, she gives us a giant statistical edge. Uh, does she have a name? I'm sure she does, but wide receiver one will be just fine. Hey, squad. Just an FYI, I housed a plate of chili cheese fries just now, so you might want to stay away from me in the huddle. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> sorry about that, player I've never seen before. Huh? Who's this other player I've also never seen before? Wait, who are any of you people? And, and where's Maddie? 
Maddie's been traded as well. What? She was the last person on the team I knew! Other than Randall the Rooster. <laughs> oh, come on! You traded the rooster? Statistically speaking, teams with a feline mascot have a 68.45% chance of victory. <laughs> we got a team full of randos, and you're playing tic-tac-toe? This isn't tic-tac-toe. I've built you the most statistically efficient team in football history. The numbers say we'll win our next game by 20 points. And every game after, dear sister, I promised you a winning team, and this is it. <sighs> this must be how famed biologist Louis Pasteur felt when he boiled up his first speaker of buttermilk. All right, you know what to do, team. One, two, three. Go Tigers! How about some hustle, wide receiver one? Let's lay out for that. Oh, come on! Who was supposed to be covering my blind side? Oh. <laughs> hey, that was a cheap shot. We don't stand for cheap shots. Right, team? Team? Loses 63 to zero. Lisa, oh, <gasps> Hello, Lisa. Sorry to drop by unannounced. Your sister let me in and has been staring at me ever since. At ease, Lynn. She's a friend. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, Lisa, I wanted to run an idea by you. What if we did a paleontology themed episode of your show live from the Royal Woods Museum? Like it, love it, want to study it under a microscope. Have your peeps call my peeps, and we'll do it tomorrow. Great. I was thinking we could show kids how radiometric dating works by testing your dinosaur bone. That sounds... Wait, say what now? Uh, actually, Doc, I'm not so sure that's the best idea. Oh, don't be nervous. Just think of the museum as your bedroom. Uh, but with a gift shop, you'll be fine. Hmm, my only hope is to find an actual dinosaur bone by tomorrow. But where? According to my search, there are dinosaur bones at the Royal Woods Museum. Of course, Todd, you beautiful mass of metal. Mm -hmm. Hmm, should be around here somewhere. It was fortuitous that the back door was unlocked. <gasps> there. The Salorosaurian Theropod. Street name, T-Rex. How's the glue job look? I used Father's failed attempt at bechamel sauce as an adhesive. This T-Rex has over 200 bones. No one will notice if I replace one of them with my fake bone. Now, beam me up, Toddy. <laughs> abort! Abort! Why? <laughs> Phew. Oh, dang it! This will have to do. Going live in three, two, one. Welcome to Facts Matter with your science hostess with the mostest, Lisa Loud. Today, we are at the Royal Woods Museum and our special guest is Dr. Alvarez. Thanks for stopping by, Lisa. I believe you have something special to show our audience? Indeed I do. This is the dinosaur bone I discovered in my backyard. And today, we are going to use the museum's carbon dating machine to determine what era it's from. Texture looks good. Shape looks good. Oh, color looks good. Lisa, this bone is museum quality. Go ahead and use my machine. Ah! And it's 100% from the Mesozoic era. Yeah. Uh, oh, we should wrap this up. God, play the wrap-up music! <laughs> What's the rush, Dr. Loud? We still have 20 minutes left in the episode. Yeah. Uh. Dr. Alvarez, look out! Ah! Todd, in the 
initiate search protocol. On it. Oh, what have I done, Todd? <gasps> Dr. Alvarez got crushed by two tons of osseous matter because of my lies. <laughs> lies? <gasps> Dr. Alvarez, <gasps> you're alive. Lisa, what lies? <sighs> Well, the dinosaur bone I found wasn't real. It was an amalgam of loose bird bones bound together with a low-grade cheese saw, so I swapped it with one of the bones from the T-Rex. That's why it collapsed. <gasps> Lisa, how could you? I justified it by telling myself that kids around the world were getting into science because of me. But science is honest, and I certainly haven't been. I'm so sorry. Lisa, wait. It would be a shame to let all your knowledge go to waste. You're clearly good at inspiring kids and getting them interested in science. You mean I can have my show back? <laughs> Absolutely not. You have to earn my trust back first. Hmm. How would you like to start by giving tours in the museum? Really? I'd be honored. This thing's gonna take forever to put back together. Uh, actually, I may be able to help with that. Todd, initiate cleaning protocol. Todd! What is the problem? It's just the eye doctor. The problem, Todd, is that I have an irrational phobia of the ophthalmologist. But that does not compute. You are a genius. I said it was irrational, Todd, and I've tried to train myself to move past it, but I can't. <laughs> now! Just a puff of air. <laughs> no, not the air! Why don't you do the exam and make new glasses yourself? <gasps> Todd, you beautiful piece of robotic machinery. That's a great idea. Hmm. How is it looking? <laughs> well, it's not perfect, but I'd say it gets the job done. Now, can you give me a little space? You're way too close, Todd. Right. Now, let's show mother and father. <laughs> Problem solved, parents. I forged myself a new pair of glasses and all is well. Counterpoint, you did kind of just fall down the stairs. Nah, you say tomato, I say mildly nearsighted. And I say tomorrow morning you're going to the eye doctor. And maybe the pediatrician, too, to see if you have any damage from that fall. Fine. Lisa, thank you for being so mature about this. <gasps> Dear Father, this is what happens when you neglect your vehicle. Shame. Oh, well, I guess we can't go. So, that's how it's gonna be, huh? Well, too bad you didn't think of this, you little genius. Mr. Grouse, five lasagnas to borrow your car. <laughs> okay, ten, but no extra sauce. Chicken bones? Oh, yeah, honey. Uh, Grouse said not to mess with those. He chews on them at stoplights to get the last of the meat off. Oh! Yeah, thank you, Santa, for the nifty satellite set. Now, let's just hack into the Royal Woods transportation grid and create a little traffic, shall we? <laughs> Where did all this traffic come from? We're never gonna make the appointment now. I know a shortcut. Turn here. Hang on! <laughs> ah! <laughs> See? I go this way all the time. Really? Because I don't think that was a road, hun. <laughs> hmm. Perhaps some precipitation will slow us down. <laughs> a little cloud seeding and voila. We are not missing that appointment. Hmm. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! 
We made it! <laughs> I mean, Lisa, we'll wait for you in the lobby. You'll be just fine, sweetie. That's right, Lisa. This is a completely painless exam. So you say, but I know all about the dreaded puff of air. On an unrelated note, what languages do you speak? Uh, Thai, Spanish, and English. Ah, so no French, hmm? Je suis au troisième étage. Aidez-moi à m'échapper. Understood. Okay, Lisa. Lisa? Where to now, Lisa? I don't know, but we can't stay here. We've got 4.3 minutes before everyone will be looking for us. Thus, we gotta skip town, go on the lam, get the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> Did you hear that? We must be near the train station. This way, Todd. But, Lisa, I don't think... Oh, Todd, please. I think I can identify a train whistle when I hear one. You never take me seriously. Oh! <sighs> ah, this locomotive is our ticket out of here, Todd. Now, based on the wind and the angle of the sun, we are most definitely heading southeast. I cannot see anything, so I will have to take your word for it. 